Welcome to the University of Tampa. My name is Tucker Whitman and I'm a junior marketing major here at UT. Today we're going to look at some of the highlights of our beautiful Riverside campus here in downtown Tampa. We'll start at Plan Hall. This historic building was opened in 1891 as the Tampa Bay Hotel and now serves as the main academic building here at UT with four floors of classrooms as well as faculty and administrative offices. Next up, the Vaughn Center, the hub of campus life and activities. This multi-purpose building includes the campus bookstore, our primary cafeteria plus an additional food court, a theater, as well as offices and meeting rooms for student organizations. The Vaughn Center is also one of UT's residence halls, providing five floors of student rooms. Morsani Hall is another residence hall here at UT. In addition to housing approximately 450 students, this building offers another selection of eateries as well as a small grocery store. Now let's check out the Sykes College of Business. This academic building houses classrooms and faculty offices for UT's undergrad and graduate business students. This building also has a real-time stock trading room. Right next door is the Sykes Chapel for Faith and Values. This gorgeous interfaith chapel features a large main hall complete with a massive pipe organ as well as meditation rooms and meeting rooms. Student healthcare is a major priority for us here at UT. The Dickey Health and Wellness Center is accessible to all students and provides high quality services including basic medical care, counseling and wellness programs. On the east side of campus you'll find the McDonald Kelsey Library. Here students can learn from a large collection of books, periodicals and digital databases. They can also take advantage of our numerous study rooms and computers. The Academic Success Center is another great resource for students. This is your one-stop shop for academic advising, coaching, and tutoring services. Whether you're a seasoned athlete or just want to shoot some hoops, the athletic facilities here at UT are hard to beat. The Bob Martinez Athletic Center includes a large gymnasium, a weight room, and training facilities. In addition, the campus features an aquatic center open year-round, six tennis courts, baseball and softball fields, a 1,500-seat stadium, as well as a lacrosse field and intramural complex. Need a break from studying? Head to Falk Theater and catch a play. This 1,000-seat historic theater serves as a home for all major performances made by UT's Department of Speech, Theater and Dance, as well as special guests. This is one of UT's newest facilities, the Innovation and Collaboration Building. Here you will find UT's very own Starbucks. In addition, classrooms, cybersecurity labs, study lounges, and the Loth Entrepreneurship Center, designed for student entrepreneurs to launch their startups. Thanks for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video tour of UT, we'd love to give you one in person. For more information or to schedule a campus visit, go to ut.edu.
This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams. Discover your talents. Get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa.
And welcome everybody to University of Tampa Baseball Doubleheader Day at Tampa Field as the Spartans and the Lynn Fighting Saints will match up in a kind of a big weekend for Tampa. It's their final weekend of the SSC season. They are holding on to first place. They have the same number of losses as Rollins with four, but have three more wins because next week when everyone else still plays in SSC play, the Spartans are done. They are done as of today. Jack Ike along with Taylor Stolworthy. Before we get going, I must congratulate Taylor Stolworthy. About two, three, four hours ago, you... Uh, crossed the stage and graduated from the University of Tampa. Congratulations. Oh, thanks, Jack. It feels <laughs> weird now being an alumni calling the game for the first time. And also, it may be a little weird for some Spartan students as well. Players like Jordan Lala and Michael DeMoe and a few others were also crossing the stage in the morning ceremony. And a few others maybe had done so in the afternoon as well. We have quite a few seniors that we'll be getting to later on in the day. As yep. It is a doubleheader, and they are going to honor these seniors on what is technically our senior day yes. and senior weekend here at the University of Tampa. But for now, they're hoping to try to keep this lead in the Sunshine State Conference. If Tampa can complete the sweep against Lynn, easier said than done, they need two wins. It means Rollins would have to win out. Yes, definitely. And at the moment, Rollins is trailing St. Leo 2 to nothing. In the bottom of the fourth, they're playing a doubleheader. They started at 2 o'clock, so they have an hour head start on us. So we get ready for today's game. Alex Canny on the mound for Tampa. And he brings in his 6-0 record. The starting lineup for Lynn looks similar to yesterday's game. And it will start with number 2, A.J. Orico, a junior from Boynton Beach, Florida. Batting second will be number 27, Byron Murray. And he is a senior from Nassau, the Bahamas. Batting third, number 34, DJ Flowers, a sophomore from Miami, Florida. Batting fourth is number four, David Judge, a junior from Troy, New York. Batting fifth is number 10, and that is Derek Lamontagne, Lamontagne, I should say, a senior from St. Amable, Quebec, Canada. Batting sixth is number 23, and that is Oscar Benitez, a senior from Miami, Florida. Batting seventh is number 44. And this is Pedro Martinez. And yesterday we mentioned that we couldn't find any relation to the Pedro Martinez baseball Red Sox pitcher. He yep. is the son of Pedro Martinez. We stand corrected. Indeed, we, went we, are, we were wrong, in fact. We <laughs> looked it up, and, uh, well, I did not look good enough at all <laughs> because he is one of a few sons of the great Red Sox ace as a Yankees fan. He definitely was uh, the bane of my father's <laughs> existence when I was younger because I was a little too young to see Pedro in his prime. Yeah, I was born yeah. in 2000, and that's when Pedro went back-to-back -back in two of the greatest MLB seasons <laughs> ever pitching a two ERA where the AL average was like 450. <laughs> that was during the most offensively friendly era of baseball, and Pedro Martinez was putting up absolutely incredible numbers. And so. it is his son in the game, number 44 today, and we went down and had a good-natured conversation with him, and he said, no problem. He said, by the way, you guys do a great job. <laughs> yeah, very nice to get a compliment for him, and we want to give him one as well. He does a great job on the field here yes. for Lynn. Yes. Sadly, he's not in the starting lineup, so hopefully he'll come he on. Is as, uh, today. He is today. He actually is. That, or is that, you know, you know, I've still got yesterday's oh, game yeah, on no, here. No, you do have yesterday's yeah. game. Take hopefully that back. he makes an appearance as a pinch hitter or makes an appearance later tonight in game two. That'll start, I think, 30 to 40 minutes after the conclusion of game one. So leading off is Orico, and he is from Boynton Beach, Florida. Alex Canny on the mound. Behind the plate, Santiago Garavito for Tampa today. As I'll try to get my uh, scoreboard updated. Ball outside, so he draws a five-pitch walk to start the game. Spartans defensively with Garavito behind the plate. We have Drew Earhart at first. Nick Saladino <coughs> at second base, Anthony Nunez at third, J.D. Urso at shortstop. Outfield, Jordan Lala in left, Jose Cadenas. There's a pop-up out of play. Cadenas in center at E.J. Combo is in right. It's interesting. Same lineup on the field for the Spartans with the uh, with the change of Garavito and Gutcher, yes. which is a frequent change we've seen from time to time. They like to switch up their uh, positioning, usually game after game. Foul ball. 
This is David Judge batting second. He was cleanup hitter yesterday. We had a source from the Lynn dugout suggesting that he may be a second cousin to Aaron Judge, but uh, there's not as much uh, evidence to back that up, sadly. So We weren't able to go to the source and find yeah. out this one. <laughs> <laughs> we may have to do that uh, later in the day today. <laughs> but certainly this season, he's hit pretty close to Aaron Judge <laughs> numbers. 367 average, nine home runs, and a team-leading 40 RBIs. And he's healthy. Yeah, unlike Aaron Judge, sadly. Yes. Can it, ooh, good pickoff move, close. Caught Arico leaning a little bit. Canny, one, two count, the pitch. Swing and a miss, he may have tipped it, but it was caught by Garavito for the strikeout. One down. Taking a look at Caney's stats as we enter the game today. He's been pretty dominant on the mound for the Spartans. He's second in the team in strikeouts with 41 behind Braden Nelson's 45. That should just tell you how good of a strikeout pitcher Nelson, Nelson is. Nelson is and <laughs> not as many innings. Indeed. But Caney's done a good job recording strikeouts and apart from the leadoff walk, he's also kept his walk count relatively low. Only yep. 10 entering the game. Wow. Sunshine State Conference standings, Tampa 24 and 4, Rollins 21 and 4. Fouled off. Florida Southern, third place at the moment, 14 and 10. St. Leo is 14 and 11. Barry 13 and 14. Nova Southeastern 12 and 14. Florida Tech 11 and 13. Embry Riddle 9 and 18, as well as Palm Beach Atlantic. Eckerd 8 and 18, and Lynn 7 and 18. Orico dancing a little bit off first, fouled back. That's Leon Paulino from Lawrence, Massachusetts, a sophomore. Overcast day, hot and humid though. Yeah, certainly warm outside today. Good thing I didn't wear my full uh, graduation gown <laughs> to the game. That, uh, I asked you to wear the whole thing, at least the hat, Yeah. the mortarboard, but you didn't, you failed. I did, but I do save myself from getting a little too hot this early yeah. in, the, in the broadcast day that we have starting the opener of the doubleheader. It says it's 84. Actually, 87 in Tampa. The big question is, how hot does it feel? Because it's always a little different from the actual the, temperature. It says the flizzlick, as we used to call it in Wisconsin, is 90. Oof. They couldn't fit, fit in feels like in the... Uh, the uh, square that they gave him on the chart. There's a throw. Might have him. Tag. Oh, he dropped the ball. He better get back on the base. Does he know it? Oh, <laughs> that was close. He knew he was out on the tag by Urso, but Urso lost the ball. And it went rolling into the outfield. And Orico started to run back to the dugout, and his teammates said, get back on the base. Good reactions just to get there barely in time because... They almost got it back for the second tag. Take a look at my weather app quickly. 94 on the real field. Ooh. I'll go with mine. <laughs> that, that definitely sounds a little bit nicer. <laughs> yeah, not much. Strikeout. Two down now. And coming to the plate is Byron Murray in the cleanup role today. As Murray gets set, just give you a quick update. A run has been walked in at Rollins. They've got the bases loaded and two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. It's now a 2-1 St. Leo lead. Those games are being played in Rollins. If you're watching online from the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network, go split screen and check out that <laughs> game as well. Yeah. Get to see the two top contenders for this year's 2023 Sunshine State Conference title in action. By the way, an update from yesterday. Remember when... Um, Combo hit the ball and to the warning track, yep. but then it, it seemed like it was catcher's interference or something. It was a pitch clock violation, which was ball four, oh. so he got the base. Found that out at well after the game. <laughs> kind of forget that the pitch clock exists here in D2 as well. Yeah, there's no clock to look at. It's all the umpires uh, controlling it. Nothing visible to look at. 
Ball outside. But we did have a catcher's interference earlier in the game. So, you know, in that play yesterday, when I thought the umpire was calling timeout, the field up, he probably was because it was a pitch clock violation. Yeah, exactly. Timeout because there was no current play. Yeah. Ball outside. So Kenny swing. struggling a bit to find the zone at the moment. It wasn't a bad pitch, that one. Just a little bit yeah. high, I think. Yep. Actually, yeah, it was now a 2-2 count. Oriko on second with a slight lead, dancing a little bit off. Canny fires. Pops it up. Heading out to Cadenas, drifting to his left, camps and catches to end the inning. So they did get a runner on a walk, but that's it. After that, three straight outs, we played a half an inning. It is Lynn Nothing, Tampa coming to bat on TampaSpartans.tv. We head to the bottom of the first, Tampa coming to bat. It will be Lala Erhard Urso. Pitching for Lynn is Chris Mormila. Number 21 on the roster. A pitcher out of Wildwood, New Jersey. Hasn't had a lot of outings, but gets to start today. He's at 13 innings, 13 strikeouts to just four walks. Not a bad strikeout to walk ratio. Notably, he's listed to have four starts this season, but I have a feeling that I wonder if he's maybe more of an opener hmm. because those didn't go that long, and the earned run totals don't suggest that he got blown out in any of his starts. Throughout seven games, he only conceded eight earned, which actually isn't a terrible total. Jordan Lala to lead off. By the way, uh, just to put a uh, little note, Drew Earhart three hits away from becoming the all-time Tampa Spartan hit leader for a career. He's got a chance uh, next weekend and, of course, this or weekend. Or today. Yeah. Or this we'd game. Probably, <laughs> we'd probably prefer this game. Yeah. Later today would be nice. And yeah, sometime Next today. weekend would at the very least be uh, okay. Yeah. More than likely he'll get it at some point. It would be, I think, very unlikely to the amount of hits he gets. He's going to beat that one out. That'll go down as a hit, I'm pretty sure. Tore the glove off Mormela. And Jordan Lala will find a way to get on base no matter what. Yeah, that's where you have to be. make sure your glove fits tightly because if it's a little loose, <laughs> that's what can occasionally happen. That's a one-in-a-million play, but even those odds will sometimes come back <laughs> to hurt you. Now, let's see if Joe Urso goes by his traditional book and has Drew Earhart bunt him over. Waits. Throws over to first. Drew deceptively does not show anything. I also guarantee you that 
if there's a bunt, you're going to see the uh, Lynn infield a little more aggressive on it today. They're going to be expecting it. And he does get the, but that one gets away, and Lala will get to second anyway. One hopped it to the catcher. So now Lala in scoring position, and Earhart most likely swinging away. He does and fouls it off. I think it's interesting as well. Lynn make the change behind the plate. Avino starts today. And the first time he sees a pretty tough ball, he just takes a very weird ricochet off the pads. Glance back at Lala at second. Ball outside. Two and one. Earhart waits. Hits that one into left field, coming in, slipping, and dropping it. Earhart gets on with a base hit. Lala gets to third, first and third. Left fielder slipping while trying to make the play. And the ball bounced in front of him. That's not going to count as, error, or as an error. It's actually going to be a hit for Earhart. And now he's just two away. Yeah. J.D. Urso to the plate. J.D. very productive with runners in scoring position. Hits one out to second. Orico fields it, gets the force, but Lala scores, and the Spartans quietly take a one to nothing lead. It's an inefficient, but still an RBI nonetheless. So even though there is now one out, Tampa's still able to take the lead. They were able to score three runs last time yep. in the bottom of the first. And then after scoring two in the second, went a little quiet and then had a late inning explosion. Combo at the plate for Tampa. Looks at one down the middle. Shakes the bat high. Throw over to first. Urso back, no problem. Mormela sets, fires. Ground ball, gets through, base hit. Urso is going to round second. He's heading for third. He's going to get in standing, and the Spartans again have runners at the corners. <laughs> Anthony Nunez to the plate. Watch his little dance when he gets into the batter's box. Does it left or right-handed? There you go. <laughs> Always fun to see that, having, yeah. a, having a little kind of pre-bat. Kind of just even. helps you settle down and get ready, yeah. Yeah, a little at-bat routine. Sometimes you'll see players do stuff like during at-bat or before the at-bat. Like I know a comparison could be the Juan Soto lean, <laughs> the Padres outfielder who likes to usually lean in whenever he takes a ball. First pitch was a ball. Looked to swing, pulled it back, call strike. Big gap. I know Nunez is a lefty, but a big gap between short and third. They're playing him to pull, actually. Second baseman, pretty far away from second base. Well, Jack, thinking in terms of small ball, one thing I'd be interested to see is if they send Combo, 
and have Urso ready in case that throw isn't perfect. Yeah. This that's the type of double steal that sometimes works. Yeah. The only thing you have to watch for is shortstop coming in and not looking to make the play at second. Sometimes they'll actually just keep coming toward the home plate to see if the runner is trying to score. But that's more if the second baseman is the one who would take the throw. Check swing, call strike. Yeah, in this spot, the second baseman is not taking that throw. No. Rico is all the way covering the right field gap. In that shifted position facing off against the switch hitter, he's now on the left side against the righty. One two count. Fouled off. Urso on third, Combo on first. One out. There goes Combo, ground ball. He's going to get it. They're going to try a play at the plate. They may have him. They do. Got Urso at the plate. Nice play by Mormila. Putting a tag on was Peter Avino, who's catching today. So that wipes out that runner. Now runners at first and second. So the two outs in this inning for Tampa have both been fielder's choices. Unlucky there for Urso not to be able to make it home, but the good news is, is it was a weird enough grounder that you couldn't immediately turn two on that play. Right. As that's the worst case scenario. Double play, <laughs> end the inning, and there's no chance. Jamarcus Lyons watches one high. Nice to see his grandpa and uncle are here. His uncle got up on the screen now taking a photo. Marcus DH today. Whoa, inside. I yeah, wanted to get that slider going in through the front door, but uh, it missed by some margin. Yeah, it, it tried to crash through the front window on that one. Maybe even through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 2-0 pitch. Oh, and he taps it. Foul. <coughs> Check swing. Fortunately, stayed foul. One ball, two strikes. Take that, reverse that. Two balls, one strike. Tampa pushed one across here in the first, looking for more. Fly ball heading out toward left center. Caught by the left fielder to end the inning. Spartans get one. Did come up with three hits on the inning, but left two on base. We played a full inning. It's one nothing Tampa on TampaSpartans.tv.
Top of the second inning we go. Alex Canny on the mound for Tampa. 1-0 Tampa on top. An update on the Rollins-St. Leo game at Rollins. It is now a 3-2 Rollins lead in the bottom of the fifth. So they picked up three in the fourth to take the lead. They were trailing 2-0 going in. At the plate is La Montagna. I think that can just show you how quickly these games can turn around. All of a sudden you go from a 2-1 lead to a 3-2 deficit. So even though Lynn trails early, they've got time to respond on offense. And also, you've got three lefties coming up against a righty. So you've got to think about that platoon hmm. advantage as well. They are playing him to pull, which I remember they did last night. You can see J.D. Urso, not the full shift that we've seen on occasion, but almost straight behind second base. I'm surprised they didn't move as far because now they have reached two strikes in the count. And he hits it where Urso might have been. He makes the play, does, takes the throw. I think they, oh, they called him safe. Thought he might have had him. Nice play by J.D. to get backed. Lamontania, nice job hitting it to where he was. Yeah, I think La Montagna just was able to run it out. It took one hop on the throw. A very awkward angle to make that play. So obviously it's going to be tough to convert it. But Yeah, sliding away from the field on the dive or from the base. Show bunt. This is Ford. Ryan Ford, a junior outfielder out of... Freehold, New Jersey. Shows bunt again. This time gets it down. They let it roll foul. Earhart on the play, covering with Saladino. One and one is the count. Canny in the stretch. Another bunt, and again, Erhard fields it in foul territory. Great job both times by Erhard to let it roll foul, because you're always a little bit scared that it's going to stay fair, but just as it gets to him, he waits, he waits, and oh, it's <laughs> foul. Now I'll pick it up. I think I mentioned to you many years ago at Wrigley Field, the Cubs were a particularly bad fielding team. So the grounds crew actually slanted the baselines so that if anybody bunted or put one down the line, it would roll foul. It was imperceptible, but <laughs> enough that it would roll foul. That's just pretty cool. Like, you're able to really find the balance of, hey, this looks pretty much the same, so no one's going to notice it, but also it's going to have a noticeable impact yep. on how things actually work. Swing and a miss. Ford goes down. <clears throat> one out. Doherty coming to the plate. <laughs> Quick throw. La Montagna is back. Strike call. Top of the zone. Fouled off. Out of play. Spartans were 9-2 winners yesterday. And it was uh, not a super easy top of the ninth. Lynn were able to get a run home. Mm -hmm. And they also were able to load the bases. Unfortunately, couldn't convert. Or fortunately for the Fighting Knights, they weren't able to convert with the bases loaded. And Tampa held on. Well, that's where those four extra runs came in. It was a 5-0 game for the longest time. Now they have two strikes on Doherty. And look, at there's the big shift. Three players to the first base side. 
And he hits one out deep. Chasing it is Combo. Makes the catch on the run. That looked a little dangerous off the bat, but Combo, racing to his left, made the catch. Yeah, every outfielder currently starting for the Spartans has great range to make plays like that. Combo a little more deceptively. He does a great job in right field. Cadenas, one of the best defensive center fielders in the league. And Lala, who generally starts at center field, mm -hmm. shifting over to left, and he's just as good there. Two down now. Rodriguez at the plate. <laughs> Number eight hitter in the lineup. That one goes low and gets the strike. Off-speed pitch. That may be in the gap. Giving chase. Giving chase. Oh, you were talking about the speed of Cadenas. And he really, really ranged from center field to catch that one in the left center alley to retire the side. So they did get a runner on, but that's all they got. We've played an inning and a half. Tampa still on top, one to nothing, on TampaSpartans.tv. players. Bottom of the second, Salvatore Garavito to lead off for Tampa. He did not play yesterday. Gutcher was the starting catcher. Pops it up. Is it playable? Ranging over. Behind the dugout, and I think he caught it. He did. He disappeared behind the dugout. Judge, David Judge, still hasn't. There he is. <laughs> Took him an extra second to emerge. But. The, the way this field is set up is it's in play beyond the dugouts down to baselines, and they do disappear if the ball goes behind the dugout. I mean, they're not behind it, but it's beyond our down the line farther, and they do run out of view. Visibly behind it from uh, where yes. we're sitting, though. That's the word. <laughs> And that was almost physically behind it. Went pretty, pretty much alongside it. Yeah. I would just beat the dugout had no roof. That's the type of play you'd see him walk into the dugout for. Saladino, ground ball, fielded by Judge. So he makes two plays to get the first two outs of the inning. A couple unassisted plays there. Jose Cadenas, the number nine hitter for Tampa. Three eleven average on the year. Oh. 
And I think he got hit. He did. Ouch. Yeah, just missed inside. And he'll take his base. I see in the Rays game yesterday, Randy Rosarena hit a home run then got plunked his next two times up against the Yankees. Yeah, he did. Those two teams love each other dearly, I know. Yeah, very much not rivals at all. <laughs> they are the, the, the Rays have a 10-game lead over the Yankees already. Yeah. And the as Yankees you, are still 500. And as you mentioned, every team in the East is 500 or better. Shows you how good the, uh, the, the Rays have been. Also, some of the injury struggles the Yankees have had. Mm -hmm. I think they said eight main players yep. injured right now. There goes Saladino. And Catcher not able to come out of the crouch to make that play. Might have slipped backward in his crouch. Yeah. Just disrupted his throwing motion. Kind of looking at the turf like what happened there. So Cadena's now on second Jordan Lala at the plate. That's his 13th stolen base of the season. Only the batter at the plate right now. Jordan Lala has more for the Spartans with 28. That's a lot of stolen bases for uh, Cadenas, considering he's been limited in his playing time. Yeah, coming mainly off the bench, although a lot of the times he is a pinch runner. Yeah, that's so true. That gives him a few other opportunities. Lala waits. Goes high for that one. Swings and misses. Inning is over. We've played two full. And it's still one nothing. Tampa leads Lynn on TampaSpartans.tv. We're into the third inning. Tampa still on top, one to nothing over Lynn. Leading off for Lynn will be Avino, the number nine hitter. Then it'll be Orico and Judge. Alex Caney on the mound for Tampa. Giving up just one hit. Walked one, struck out three. Has thrown 36 pitches at this point. A little bit inside. I'm sure he would like to get down to less than 18 pitches in the inning. Yeah, certainly, because I know he'd probably like to go six or seven and maybe even a little bit longer. And he's looked good today where he could. But, yeah, just keeping that pitch count lower will certainly help that. Ground ball heading out to Urso. Comes in a little bit. Quick toss. Had him by two steps. Great throw there by Urso. He was, I had to double clutch it, but once he got that throw off, it was a missile to first. Speaking of that, being a shortstop, what did you think of Wander Franco's little flip of the ball to transfer it to his other hand? Did you see that one? Yeah, I thought it was yeah. a fun little play. Yeah. A little cool to see people were alive that had some time. trying to get on him for being cocky but it's like well you know if he botched it he wouldn't do it again <laughs> exactly that's where you that's where you point and laugh if you made yes. a mistake but yes i definitely think that especially as the new generation of players are coming in gotta let players have fun in the game yeah 
There's no harm, no foul, as they say. Exactly. Yeah, it's a hot dog thing, but it was it was it's flair. Yep. There's one hit out into straightaway center, bounces in front of Cadenas for the hit. It's kind of like back in my day, my favorite player was Pete Maravich, and they were like, you don't throw behind the back passes in <laughs> basketball. That's just a hot dog move. It's like I, the ball got to the player who made the layup, so what's the big deal? Yep. <laughs> as long as it gets the job done. Yeah. If you throw a behind the back pass and it hits your coach that's sitting on the bench. <laughs> And that's where the player would be joining the coach on the bench. Yes. <laughs> David Judge at the plate. Quick throw over. Oracle is back. <laughs> Ground ball. Judge uh, uh, Nunez. Quick one. Relay. Inning over. There's the quick inning we were looking for. Spartans with the 5-4-3. And that'll do it for the top of the third. One to nothing, Tampa still on top on TampaSpartans.tv. Bottom of the third, Drew Earhart will lead off for Tampa. Umpires for today's game, same umpires as yesterday. They've just switched spots. Christopher Witt behind the plate. Ray Parrish is in the field. Umpires have to love it where the only time you reference them is just to acknowledge that they're the umps for the game. Yeah, that's how the ump can tell. They're doing a pretty good job. They have, yeah. Never really acknowledge an umpire if they're just doing their job. You yep. usually say it if you find there's a play. It's like, ooh, that might not have been the right call. <laughs> but it's always good to read, like uh, acknowledge them because they do a lot to help the games happen. Oh yeah. Back uh, when over the summer doing my summer leagues, there are times where we weren't able to get enough umpires for games from time to time. Really? And that's there's where uh, out to right field, going back, back, and making the catch. Murray. Made it look easy near the warning track. Seems like the major league umps are coming under a little bit of criticism lately. Yeah, although I don't think that's an entirely new thing. Yeah, probably but, uh, so. <laughs> yeah, certainly a few umps have a habit of being uh, picked on a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, based on some of the calls I've seen, they're not always for uh, unjustified reasons. <laughs> J.D. Urso at the plate hit into a... Uh, Force out situation last at bat. Also got an RBI out of it. His and that's 50th of the season. Wow. He's now just one away from EJ Combo. Ball a little bit outside. 2 0. Big swing and a miss there. We did not see a home run yesterday, did we? No, we did not. See, the window isn't very active, though, today. Yeah. Might make it a little bit harder. Ball high, 3-1. and one. Mm -hmm. 
Tampa women's softball team ranked higher than the men's softball team. Aren't they number one in the nation right now? I believe so, and their team wrapped is having up the a, conference. a historic season, setting new records for every single metric in terms of runs scored. Although the pitching isn't an all-time team. They've had some pretty crazy seasons in the circle. But, yeah, at the plate, they have been absolutely on fire. In fact, a few of the players have come close to matching some of the big stats the baseball team has done as well. For instance, averages from players like Jordan Lala, E.J. Combo, just super high. Speaking of Combo, he's at the plate as Urso drew a walk. One out walk, throw over. And all I'll say is if, if uh, Combo can get another hit here, that would put him close to 450 on the season. Jeez. And again, over the next four games to round out the regular season, he's in good, a good position to finish over 400 for his batting average. Wow. Fly ball out to center. Paulino shields his eyes, makes the catch near the warning track, and throws it in. Sun has burst out here. Now it's a sun-bathed field. We have some clouds. But the sun found a way to poke through. I was checking the weather, and it did say that uh, within 45 minutes, around 4.30 to 4.45, could see some showers. How dare you? But for now, it's keeping clear, and okay. it has cooled down a tiny bit, I think, which is a little bit nicer, gives us a reprieve. We're yeah. both wearing black shirts, and <laughs> those aren't the most friendly when it comes to sunny skies. Throw back. Umpires wearing black shirts as well, but they are standing out in the sun. Ball outside. The other thing I always oh, combo wait or uh, Urso waits. Did he make it? No, not sure what happened there with JD. If he was daring the catcher to do something before he went back, I think so. It looked like he just was maybe he thought he had the catcher off guard. That yeah, maybe the catcher just wasn't paying attention and he decided, hey, let me take a shot at it. But to his dismay, Avino said, oh, he's going to second. I'll just make a quick little throw. No, oh, inning over, still one nothing. All right, we head to the top of the fourth inning for the call from the fourth, fifth, and sixth innings. Taylor, do something with this game here. It's one nothing. Well, I've got to keep my ERA in check. So does Alex Caney. <laughs> His first pitch, a swing and a miss from Paulino. He struck out back in the first inning. As Caney was able to get two of his three back in the first inning where he just gave up a walk and then was able to get out of the inning. And oof, another strikeout or strike there in the dirt. Jump the gun a little bit. That's not his fourth yet. He's just going to go ahead 0-2 right now. But yeah, clearly Polino wants a fastball. And this time he's going to go off speed three straight to get the out. So Candy now has four strikeouts on the game. And that was three straight pitches to do so. Here comes Byron Murray, number 27. 
He didn't strike out back in the first. His flyout ended the inning. And he's going to take strike one. Just misses inside. Oh. This one's going to be sent deep, but foul. Certainly turned some eyes very quickly. <laughs> Jordan Lala didn't budge, though. He, he knew what he was going on with that start. one. Yeah. yeah. Got a little better angle. Though they are not playing him to pull. This one popped up. And it'll stay one and two. And going to land back over by the fans. There's that little sliver by the dugout and uh, the concession area for some fans hanging. That's where you can get a foul ball if it gets <laughs> off the roof or just lands in that spot. Just about outside for <laughs> ball two there. Gervito is on top of it. And fouled one more time. Yeah, that'll bring it to two and two here. And for Caney, this will be, I believe, his 52nd pitch coming up. Wow. And fourth straight foul ball for Murray. He's done a good job keeping himself alive. And there's Dalton Ross with the delivery of a few <laughs> new baseballs. He was featured on uh, Fox Sports, uh, Fox local Fox News. How he's had to adjust his pitching style. Oh. There's a drive to left field. The last one was foul. This one is fair, and it is a tie ball game. For Murray, it is a solo shot, and we are level one to one. And I'm just taking a look back at his stats. He knows how to hit the long ball. <laughs> it's number 13 wow. of the season. Wow. That's more than any Spartan hitter. I said that was a no-doubter. Man. I think you could tell right off the bat that that was going to go all the way, even if it's hard to read in the cloudy sky. La Montagna now steps up with a tie game here. The lefty is one for one. He had the first hit of the ball game back in the second inning. This may be one of those games where the Spartans are going to have to just battle. And it certainly feels like it at this stage. Yeah. They've done a little more on offense early, but obviously it's not how you start, it's how you finish. We'll notice that there's a little tossing and stretching over at the uh, Lynn bullpen. They have an arm that I don't think has had too many long outings as a starter, so might have to make that change, and that could open an opportunity. Spartans seeing a fresh arm might give them a chance to get the offense moving. Chopped over to Earhart. Stays fair for out number two. And that'll bring up the lefty forward to the plate. And he was the third strikeout for for Canny. Swing and a miss for strike one. Strike two taken. By the way, stay tuned between games when it'll be Senior Day festivities. We'll have that. This one's going to be a hit to Urso. And that'll end the inning. A solo shot is able to tie the game, but for now we've played three and a half. And, well, Lynn have found their way back into it. Over Tampa has their five, six, and seven hitters due up, looking to reclaim that lead. Tampa Spartans baseball will be right back right after this.
And we're just about ready to go in the bottom of the fourth inning. The Spartans holding on to this draw right now. As Lynn were able to respond in the top of the fourth. Tampa's usually found a response in the bottom half of innings when Lynn gets on the board. Nunez has a chance to do so here. Grounded out with a fielder's choice. Although the out wasn't his. 0-1 as he fouls this one away. Nunez was on uh, John Boy Media earlier this season for a play where he was trying to distract the runner at third base and make him mistime his tag from third to home in a sacrifice fly. And it certainly led to uh, annoyance from uh, some baseball fans on Twitter. But I don't think Nunez minds too much. He was able to respond in the next series with a home run. He's going to take this one outside. It's 1-2. and two. Just misses. It's 2-2. Two and two. Tried to go back door with the slider, but misses it. Count goes full as Nunez watches this one go up high. There's a little behind the back grab for Mormiel. Jamarcus Lyons is on deck for the Spartans. By the way, a lefty is warming up for Lynn in the bullpen. Nunez fouls this one away. Nunez, this one hit off Mormiel's glove. Buddy gets on top of it this time, and that's one away. The good news is his glove stayed on this time. The leadoff hit of the game knocked his glove off, causing the ball to go an odd direction that allowed for a leadoff base hit. Bottom of the order from 5-9, to nine, currently hitless. Lions is going to hope to turn that trend around. Rounded up the middle, and he does. That'll be a base hit. Puts a runner on with one away. Garavito fouled out last time. Judge made a great running play all the way behind the dugout in foul territory. I think most other fields, that's just a foul ball and a strike, but Tampa, there's more opportunity for plays like that to be made. Apart from that, the outfield dimensions aren't too crazy for the Spartans field here. 321 down the line, 375 in left and right center, and 395 directly in center. Count goes one and one with a runner on first and one out and a one one ball game. For each team has played one game of this series in game one today. Pickoff, but Lions is safe. I don't think Lynn have had a successful pickoff today. They've tried a few times. Try two taken. <laughs> now the one two to Garavito. Swung on and missed. The slider fools him. And that is the second strikeout for Mormiel. Two away. And it brings up Nico Saladino.
Saladino's really emerged as the team's new starting second baseman. And he's done a great job in his first season with the Spartans, one of the first full seasons with the Spartans. Taking a look at his stats as he enters this at bat, 290 with a 415 on base percentage and only a 383 slugging. But I love that on base percentage, he's been able to get on base quite a few times. A little downside is he does have 29 strikeouts on the season. This isn't going to be number 30. It's going to land for a base hit. Lions is going to be held up at third. It is a two-out double, and the Spartans now have the go-ahead run just 90 feet from home. And that'll bring up Jose Cadenas. Tough spot here for the Spartans and for Lynn. At the plate this season, however, Cadenas has actually done pretty good. Rightly enough, he's actually slugging 508 this season. Sprint speed's probably helped him get his five doubles he's had. He's even turned a team tied three, uh, two triples this season. And he's even hit a home run. Still with only 61 at-bats, he's a little further down the order with just 13 RBIs. But he has a few potential runs that could come home here. As there's a quick conference on the mound between Avino and Mormil. The 1-0. Grounded over to short. Throw to first just in time. Daniels couldn't run it out, and that'll end the inning. Tampa, a dangerous chance at offense, but comes up with nothing. We stay tied as we've completed four. Top of the fifth coming up, 7-8-9 and nine for Lynn. And we're back, top of the fifth. And leaning off is going to be Doherty. I actually want to go back as uh, we get started here and talk about that little research issue we had yesterday. That was primarily on me since I was actually doing the active Googling. But indeed, as this one is flown to center field and caught for out number one, really interesting to see Pedro Martinez for Lynn is the son of Pedro Martinez, who famously pitched for the Red Sox, ultimately got his number 45 retired by the Red Sox, too. And I also wanted to quickly check out Pedro's stats against a Tampa legend in Tino Martinez. Tino Martinez's prime, he played for the New York Yankees as the bat and ball are sent down the third baseline. The bat goes foul, the ball stays fair, and there's two away. But going back to uh, Pedro Martinez, 
He faced Tino Martinez 13 times. Tino went 2 for 13 against Pedro. But interestingly, he only struck out once. So that shows, well, maybe Pedro, well, Pedro definitely had Tino's number more often than not. He wasn't striking out Tino Martinez a lot. And that's definitely a good thing that Martinez can brag about. He was able to put the ball in play more often than not against Pedro. So yeah, and again, we'll have to wait and see whether Pedro makes a pinch hit appearance, pinch field appearance, or gets to start in Game 2, which will be after Game 1. Expect it 30 to 40 minutes once this first game concludes. Uh, we'll be back live eventually back on Tampa Spartans TV. But for now, we still have to continue this game as we're still just in the top of the fifth. Two away. And, of course, stepping up now is Avino. Strike one take. And one quick check over at Rollins. They've reclaimed the lead in the bottom of the seventh. It's top of the eighth, and they lead four to three. Count goes 0-2 oh for Avino. Chance for Kennedy to get out of the inning. And he does. Strikeout number five for Canny. He's completed five innings with just about 66 pitches. Solid stuff on the mound. Takes us to the bottom of the fifth. One, two, three, do up for your Tampa Spartans. So we're just about ready to get underway. A new pitcher is taking the mound for Lynn. Or is it? No, he just had his glove in his right hand for a second. That's embarrassing. Lala leads off. He's one for two. And I will say, if you wanted to make a change in the mound, this isn't a bad time to do it. You have a lefty warming up. Tampa's best lefty hitter at the plate and fourth in the order is another strong lefty hitter. Although he kind of has the Jordan Alvarez effect, he hits better almost against left-handed pitchers. Balala is still hitting really well as two. He's one for two today, striking out back in the second. Taken up high for ball one. That one's going to be taken. Strike one. One and one quickly here for Lala. Chopped over to short. One away. Earhart back at the plate. 
I mentioned before, needs two hits to set the Spartans' all-time record. It's one for two today. And, ooh, this one misses. Even Avino couldn't get to that one. The slider going front door turned into some sweet chin music there. Ball oh, just missing inside. It's 2-2. Two and 2-0. Two. Oh, two, oh. two pitches in the at-bat, and both of them just missed. Earhart up 3-0 oh now. Urso's on deck. Definitely not the best move to walk Earhart and bring up Urso with a runner on board. It backfires more often than it works out for teams that do it. And that will be what happens here. Earhart sees four straight balls to get aboard. Here comes J.D. Urso. The only player who can graduate and be a, a technical sophomore. That's because of the COVID redshirt rules that uh, allowed him to be a freshman for three seasons. Including winning back-to-back -back Freshman of the Year awards for the Sunshine State Conference. Last season and the season before. That's generally a award you never win twice. If I check, I'd not be surprised if Fairheart is the only player to ever do so. By do so, I mean win that award twice. Period. Not even in a row. Want to know here to Urso. Just got his 50th RBI of the season recently. He's been incredible at the plate like always. And we're going to see him call to the mound here. Just a little mound visit. And my question will be, is this going to be a call to the pen or is it just going to be a check-in with more meal? He's on 55 pitches. Is he maybe a little bit low on gas? Does his stamina not really reach into the 60s that often? From looking at his innings pitched stats this season, that seems like it's a somewhat good assumption. He's on what should be his lo longest outing of the season here. And now he's ready to go again. 1-0 to J.D. Urso. Another pickoff attempt, but Earhart is back safe. This one's lined into the gap. Make it one more hit Earhart needs for the record. The relay throw. Not in time. Well, actually... Scratch that for the uh, Earhart hit because this was J.D. Urso. Earhart gets the third. Urso slides into second. And with one out, two runners, potential go-ahead runs, are not far from home. And will we see the change to the lefty? Yes, we will. That'll be the day for Mormiel. As we once again see Lynn's coach head out to the mound. And again, you get the one free visit, and then you got to make a change. And that's usually how it goes. It's not a three strikes you're out for a pitcher. It's typically two strikes. We'll be right back as this change does happen. Watching Tampa Spartans TV. This 
is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. Entering the game now for Lynn is Chase Willis. Chase Wills. 13 appearances, 6 starts, 21 innings, 17 strikeouts to 9 walks. He'll be tasked with holding on to this tie game here for Lynn. And with one away, his first opponent is going to be a lefty, EJ Combo. Willis is actually fourth in terms of ERA on Lynn this season for their pitching staff. Lynn, as a staff, have had a 6.15 ERA and 367 and a third innings pitched. They've allowed opponents to hit 295 against them. Not the best weakness to have when you're facing a, a very offensively driven team like the Spartans. First pitch missing outside. I think he went with a slider, but carried a little far. Good job by Avino to stay on top. Could have scored a run if he got away from him. This time lands for strike one. Fouled away, it's one and two. Combo singled in the first, flew out in the third. Spartans are one for six with runners in scoring position, but four for 11 when they have runners on base. Combo fouls away, keeping alive. And this one gets away. Safe back at third. Earhart was ready to go home. But Avino, I think, was just back on top in time. And Earhart, while trying to bail out of making it, actually tripped and almost got caught on the base pass because of his uh, fall over.
2-2 free J combo. Strike three, an absolutely filthy curveball. Getting him looking. It broke directly down the middle. And at that angle, that's impossible to read for a left-handed hitter. Here comes Nunez. The switch hitter. Switching it up against the lefty. He's 0 for 2 today. Though he did get on with a fielder's choice back in the first inning. Swing and a miss. One and one. Chopped over to short. Rodriguez. The throw is on target. And even though Judge falls over, he made the catch in time. And that'll end the inning. The well, Spartans strand two more runners. They've actually left seven on the base paths today. And we're still tied as we've completed uh, five innings. Top of the sixth coming up. One, two, three, due up for Lynn. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. One one. It's been an exciting day. Jack theorized that it was going to be a battle for both teams, and well, it's turned into exactly that. Spartans have squandered a few opportunities, just stranding two more runners in the bottom of the fifth. Candy ready to go here in the top of the sixth. That was his sixty seventh pitch. He's had five strikeouts so far in the game. But if you remember, I mentioned he had thirty six pitches through two innings, so he's. He certainly sped it up. Knocked it down. Yeah, Spartans have left a lot of base runners. Yeah, typically not what you want to do to uh, try to win a game. Leave runners on base in a bad spot. Yeah, you leave a team you know, that, can, that can hang around for a while and all of a sudden something can happen. Yeah. Like Murray's home run. I know this might not be the best word to say for baseball, but I'm looking out to the outfield. I'm looking down here at the fans. There's a couple droplets. Mm, yeah. I was mentioning 430, 440. Mm -hmm. There could be some passing showers. And unfortunately, that hypothesis might be coming to fruition. It made some fans scatter down there, yeah. Has a couple umbrellas out. Yeah. As Rico is going to draw a second walk of the ball game. He's done a good job so far, getting on base all three times with one hit and two walks. Whatever it is, it's not going to be big. Mm -hmm. It's just a very small 
thing moving through. Yeah, it's a very, it's a tiny little... Uh, That's my technical meteorological term. Mm-hmm. Well, it looks like we could get a little bit of showers. It doesn't look like it is going to be anything too No, it won't last. Bad. It won't be hard, probably. Oh, one here after Judge tried to bunt but missed it. Pick off, and Enrico's back safe. Definitely imagine that Nunez will be ready, Saladino will be ready, and Urso will be ready to move. So will Earhart. I have a feeling Lynn do want to go for the bunt. As this one sent into the gap, that's going to drop for a base hit. Runner gets to third. Combo's throw will keep him there. Runner's at the corners with no one out. Actually got away there. Yeah, from ball Urso. bounced away. But he's back on top of it before Rico can think about going home. Dangerous situation now because we're in the sixth. In this stage, I wonder if they're going to make a call to the bullpen. If I'm Coach Urso, I'm sending someone out there, and I think he has. If I was him, I'd be sending Braden Nelson out there. He had one batter yesterday. Mm -hmm. Got a strikeout. And you know what? You might as well keep him here. People are scattering now. There are, yeah. It definitely shows that this rain might be a little heavier than you mentioned. Go foul. As this one's <laughs> sent very far foul down the line. Lights are even coming on at the field. As now there are some showers. Still able to play, though. What we don't want to hear is that lightning alarm. Yeah. But the good news is it doesn't look like there'll be thunderstorms or anything. Looks like it's just going to get a little bit wet. Hit over to third. They're able to turn one and turn two as Lynn take a 2-1 lead. So I'll say over at third, Nunez picked up the initial grounder and sent it to second with Saladino to get an out. But, you know, smart play by the Lynn base runner at third. Yep, Arico. Arico, he didn't leave third until Nunez started to make the throw to second. Yeah. and at Then that it was just, he was going to get home. And at that stage, you have to be committed to that double play. Yeah. So a sacrifice double play, if you will. And this next grounder will end the inning. So while Kenny keeps the damage to a very much a minimum from runners to the corners with no one out, Lynn does take the lead as we're get, about to get set in the bottom of the sixth. And, you know, while the Spartans do have a chance to come back, they have plenty of time and outs-wise... The rain could also prove to be a factor if it continues. I'll go have our intern check on it. Yeah, we'll have to. We'll take a look. <laughs> we'll get that intern working. Bottom of the sixth coming up. Six, seven, eight. Do up for the Spartans. Bottom of the sixth, Tampa now trailing two to one. Lynn have the lead. And also taking a look over at Rollins, St. Leo have one out and the base is loaded. Currently down 5-4, a walk I think just brought home, no, it didn't brought home run, it recently just loaded the bases. So that is an exciting conclusion to that Sunshine State Conference matchup. 
if Rollins and Tampa lose in this game, that keeps them level on the last count. I'll keep you updated as that top of the ninth goes. And as Jordan or Demarcus Lyons begins his first step bat here in the bottom of the sixth. The count was going to go two and one. This one just missing outside. And I'll pull up the radar one more time as still light showers out in center field. And yeah, just again, system passing by. There is a slightly more red section that looks up north as Lions is going to send one deep to left field. Looking back, see ya! The game is tied off a Jamarcus Lions solo shot. Rain or shine, Lions delivers. It's a bit of sunshine the Spartans needed after going down by a run. And at the same time, St. Leo jumped to a 7-5 lead. Two results going the Spartans' way. We're tied 2-2 here. And for Rollins, they're now trailing 7-5 there. For the Spartans, that's going to bring up Santiago Guedavito to the plate. The previous home run looked to be a no-doubter. This one, also pretty much a no-doubter. Had some good distance on it. Garavito, he'll get this down for a base hit, his first of the ball game. Hits off the wall. Throw to second, not in time, a standing double for Garavito. As the game is still tied at two. I'll bring up Nico Saladino, as now it's, it's only Cadenas and Nunez who haven't been able to get hits in the ball game. Garavito got there first just then. And this one hits him. Saladino was looking for a bunt. And, and after he pulls it back, he gets a little bump on the back from that missed off speed pitch. And that'll be disappointing for Wills. That was a lefty-lefty matchup, and that brings up a righty in Cadenas. Another update from St. Leo. It's 8-5. The Lions have singled and brought home another run. Cadenas, with no outs here, was looking to bunt. Not a bad idea from Urso. Get what would be the go-ahead run just 90 feet from home. Cadenas also knows how to run bunts out really well. Here's the 0-1. Cadenas takes. It's high for ball one. And the question will be how the infielders have to cover the bases on the bunt. Realistically, Cadenas' best spot is trying to do it shallow down the third baseline so La Montagna can't cover third. Misses this time. It's one and two. Could evaporate up on opportunity. You don't want to foul out off a bunt. Maybe Cadenas might want to try to slap it off the ground for a potential base hit. He steps off, and he did motion over to second, so there wasn't a balk on the play. I still have to be careful. Sometimes umpires will be a little more strict in terms of box. It really does depend, though. Swung on and missed at the slider inside. And that is out number one, bringing Jordan Lala back to the plate. Third, 
Dalton Ross with a fresh supply of balls for the umpire. Not be surprised if he made an appearance later today from the bullpen. Whether it's in this game or the second game coming up next. I think on the field, the weather has quieted down a little bit. There will be some scattered showers, as we often have in Florida. I can tell this because the bullpen is more active. I have a feeling they'd be hiding from the rain if it was still very active. And oof, on the outside corner, and Spartan fans not happy about that first call. But you can't argue with City Hall. Where it was convinced it was a strike, here's the 0-1. Ball one. You can argue with City Hall. You're just going to lose. Yep, that's right. the <laughs> that's the big thing. You'll lose more often than not uh, when you argue. You know, in some leagues, you can do a video review as a petition. But sure. Not on the college level. You don't have the uh, adequate technology to do so. At this sadly. level, yeah. Rays got their winning run last night off a review. That's cool. Play hey, that home, was off the uh, balance play. At home play right? Yep. Yeah. Clearly he missed the tag, but from the angle the ump was at, it was hard to tell. Always tough as well. I've seen it a few times when I've been calling NPB games as well. As Lala is up ahead 3-1 and one in the count. The inside of the plate's open for him because he's seen a lot of pitches outside. Let's see where Wills goes with this pitch. You might not want to walk the bases loaded with only one out. Strike two taken. And I think that was a smart take there from Lala. Just wait and see. Let him throw you the strike. He'd thrown three balls in a row. Had a single in the first, later score. Struck out in second, grounded out in the fifth. And now the 3-2 payoff pitch here in the bottom of the sixth. Yeah. Lalo ripped down the line yeah. and stays fair. This will give the Spartans the lead. And Saladino is held up at third. Would have been a close play at the plate. But Garavito comes home from second. And I agree, that was a good call by Coach Urso. Earhart inverts runners at second and third. And just one out here. You know, whether it goes through your mind as Coach Urso, and it probably did, but in this, you know, he's thinking of all the scenarios. He's like, okay, we'll have runners at second and third, so there's no force. It's Drew Earhart at the plate. Good chance he's going to get a hit. Mm -hmm. So let's let's have him here instead of making an out at the plate. And indeed, I was talking to Carson Queso during the opening weekend, and when we when I asked him who's the pitcher or the ha oh. yeah yeah the, the hitter you'd least like to face in a really tough high leverage spot, he said Drew Earhart. Yep. And I'd call a runners in second and third like this. Infield, look at that, playing way in. Look at Lala yeah. <laughs> standing behind the shortstop. You don't always see the runner behind the infielder. No, kind of tapped like him on the shoulder like peekaboo. No one's covering second, so Lala, no. feel free to take a big lead. He lead. is 25 feet off the base. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> if there wasn't a runner at third and this was this depth, he'd have a very easy chance to steal third. Yeah. But obviously, Saladino's there. You're not able to put two runners on a single base. You can try. Yeah, just generally lead to a tag in and out. <laughs> Earhart takes as this one goes low. And Avino on top of it. Tampa's already got the lead, but they would like to expand it. There are two reasons why they very well might. They're currently at second and third. You know, this is the chance for the Spartans to put a little distance. That'll be the goal. Just, yeah, give themselves a little extra buffer. Yeah. Here's the one-two to Earhart. Fouled away. Oh, heads, heads up, J.D. <laughs> Just missed his hip. <laughs> the danger of being in the warm-up circle. Yep. Foul ball could be headed your way. <laughs> By the way, I think fans are going to also try to get back up into the stands here. Yep. A few umbrellas are back lived. out. It's a little dry spell. Indeed, short-lived. That's another little... God, I think another cloud has passed by to give some rain. Earhart That's, pops this one up. That could get a run home. And it could, could fall. Drop. 
It and does. it does. 1-1 one, one will score. And now it will keep it with runners in second and third. Erhard <laughs> slips as he slides into second. Well, you know, I'm looking out at the field with the uh, right fielder, Murray, trying to make the play. And it's sunny out, but you can see it raining fairly hard. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. It's a real nice sun shower there. And by the way, was Erhard two hits away from tying the record? Tying. So, well, congratulations, Drew Erhard. You have just tied the hit record. For well, he Tampa was three, hit, three hits from tying. Three me, hits to break. Let me clarify, yeah. Was it three hits to tie or three hits to break? Let me get the intern on that. Yeah, sounds good. Let's get... <laughs> actually, I can pull it up right here quickly. But Intern's indeed, available. Yeah, it's the second hit of the game. We were talking about all he needed was three. And, well, it looks like Wills is ready to go. The rest of the team is not. <laughs> they are going to make a call to the bullpen, it looks like. As yep. Coach is making a point. He says, eh, yeah, no, I'm going to make this change right here. So it's it'll un- be unfortunate for so Wills. Tampa with a 4-2 lead now. It's unusual for Rudy to make the call well ahead of getting to the mound. Yeah, but... Mm-hmm. Pit- Coaches will usually go to the mound, give the pitcher a couple extra pitches. I think he was probably just about ready, though. Yeah, but or at the very least, maybe he didn't want him to warm up in the rain. Yeah, you know, this is true. Actually, on the mound, we're warming up in the rain. But we'll take a quick break. It's raining, but so have the Spartans' offense. It's now come alive for the little storm brewing. They lead four to two. Okay. Hopefully the weather will be wrapping up and welcome back. Tampa Lynn, the Spartans have taken a 4-2 lead. They responded with Lynn taking the lead here in the top of the sixth. That's good. That's what they've been doing all season. Couple losses here and there, but not many. And they're now hitting six for sixteen when they've had runners on base. That's a better average than before. Yeah. Only 3 for 11 with runners in scoring position. But 10 hits at 25 at bats. And Shane will take the mound for Lynn. Nathan Shane has had 13 appearances. 29 strikeouts to 28 walks. Now I'm looking at the rain radar. And it looks like it's working its way down toward us. Oof, that's not good. No, from the north. It could see some showers later. If things eventually do clear up, as and it's, and it's color, like it it's a colorful it system. Is. <laughs> a system where that makes you say, "Hey, this uh, may not be best, or may not be the best you thing." You may to guys, you guys may want to stop for a while soon. Yes, maybe just play you, one game. And you don't often see a north-south storm. Count goes one and one as this one misses low for JD Urso. Fielder's choice RBI, a walk, and a double. He's reached base all three times, despite going one for two. Urso Ah. pops it up. That's in play. Nice catch. Good catch there by Avino. These are two big runs out there right now with a 4-2 lead. Two more. That would be huge. For a little breathing to, room. Yeah, get that breathing room. And it would also avoid a save opportunity, too, which would probably be disappointing news for Braden Nelson a little bit. <laughs> means he most likely wouldn't get the outing. Here's EJ Combo 
facing off against the righty. Combo swings in the dirt. I don't think he. I don't think he hit it. He did not. He did not. So he moves up. Yeah, five two Spartans lead. That's time where a swing and miss is a good thing. Because <laughs> that's tipped. It's an RBI, isn't it? Yeah, well, technically it is. Yeah. Run bounced in. Yeah. <laughs> the alternate uh, definition. <laughs> now, I wonder, maybe the ball slipped away because of the rain. Yeah. yeah well, it could have been the case. We already saw Earhart slip on the base path. Definitely. Because there's another swing and a miss as this one lands. He's looking for another RBI. I wonder if, like, the pitcher get their hands wet, and that maybe would change the trajectory of the ball. As it can, it yeah. That could be something they try to utilize. Here's the 0-2. Combo takes. Yeah, especially if, like you say, you get a little water in the glove, put it on the ball, and that's going to look mm -hmm. very different. It's almost different. a spitball kind yeah. of a thing. And again, natural weather. Is that against the rules? No, <laughs> it is not. <laughs> it is not. One, two. Fouled away. Went golfing after that one. Summertime's a great time to hit a golf course. <laughs> I mean, it's always a good time in Florida to do so. Oh, yeah. it's, it's perfect weather year-round. But speaking of someone who's now just graduated. You thinking time. of the links now? Potentially. I know okay. my brother and father love to go out there. Okay. Have more time to join them this year. Ah. And Combo gets under this one. This should end the inning. Rodriguez tracking back. Oh, no. Oh. Ford called for it, and he is going to miss it as a run will score. Boy, I think Rodriguez had that one in his sights all the way, and then he got called off by Ford, who was well short of getting to the ball. And Ford ultimately has a really rough slip on the turf as well. Yeah. I the good news is he's up and okay, but... I mean, that is yeah. the left fielder's call, but it sure looked like Rodriguez had it in his sights. Yeah, I think Ford there should have just let Rodriguez have it because that landed right next to Rodriguez. 6-2 yeah. lead, and uh, I do disagree with the call that it's an EJ Combo double. They as did call it a sense. double? That's what it's currently graded as. Okay. That one I will disagree. I think that should be an error in left field because that was a pretty well, big diving miss. You know, he never did get it, though. I mean, if you were any other ball, if you dove and missed and it fell in for a hit, he, I mean, he called for it, but maybe did, just never realized he wasn't really going to get there. Yeah. Also wonder what the expected batting average on that play would be. <laughs> Probably not high. Probably close to the uh, career numbers for Tino Martinez against Pedro Martinez. It's <laughs> it's still coming down out there, though, even though it's almost sunny. It is. Actually, things have gotten a little cloudier as uh, it's yeah. continued. But again, no thunder, no lightning. That means it's a green light to keep playing. No, the up. But now it looks like, actually, it's going to be a red light. So, naturally, commentator's curse happens today at this juncture, but not for okay. any of the plays on the field. And we will take a rain delay. Yeah, it's coming down good now. We'll have to wait and see what the official rulings are. We'll keep you updated, but for now, enjoy some advertisements. Uh, <laughs> we don't have the Yes uh, Sad Saxophone music. <laughs> but uh, for Jack Ike, I'm Taylor Storthy, and we'll be we back. may be back in a few. Well, just wait and see. Well, let me open this. I am Okay, that's actually...
there we go. We're going to just check this smite level. And, well, it's been about an hour and change, <laughs> and even more change after that. Yeah. But we're finally back, ready to play baseball here at the University of Tampa. Thank you for sitting with us through this uh, rain delay. And also shout out to the fans who have come back yeah. with this rain delay as well. Hey, it's, it's senior day. It's parents' day, so the parents had to come back. Of course. <laughs> the other fans maybe not, unless they wanted to see the doubleheader, which... To my knowledge, still, still be going after. Still good baseball. So that'll be a late night showdown at this rate, 6, 11 p.m. And I believe about 6.15 was the estimated start time before. But it looks like we'll go a minute early. We inherit a 1-1 count for Anthony Nunez with Shane on the mound. They're also a runner on second, EJ Combo, as the Spartans have scored five runs here in the bottom of the sixth. Although they now have been over an hour ago, so let's see if the Spartan <laughs> bats can stay just as warm. You know, you had to wonder about putting a pitcher back out there after an hour delay. Obviously, Alex Candy's day is done. Yeah, Candy's day most likely would have been done after the inning no matter what. More, but yep, this yep. makes that decision quite yep, easy. Yep. Now ready to go, the 1-1. Oh. Nunez with the first swing. This one's going to be sent to left field. And caught at the wall by Ford. So, well, all we needed was that first pitch to get out <laughs> of the bottom of the sixth. Yeah. But we're back underway here at the University of Tampa watching Tampa Spartans TV. So, it took about an hour and a half, but five runs have given the Spartans the lead this time around. And that will also conclude my day on the mic once we head back from break. So, yeah, just as soon as we get back, here's another one-minute break, and we'll be right back to see who's going to make a change for the Spartans on the mound. Top of the seventh, and, well, got a six earned run average today coming in as the play-by-play -play for the middle innings. But I'll hand it back to you, Jack, as Tampa has retaken the lead. Nice job. Thank you, yeah. Got the lead back. Paul Sullivan coming on to pitch for Tampa as Alex Canny's day is done after doing six innings and pitching very well for Tampa. Sullivan is a senior from Montvale, New Jersey, started his collegiate career at Iona University. This is his 15th appearance of the year. He started once, has a 2-3 and three record, a couple saves. First batter he's going to face is La Montagna. Sullivan has pitched 27 and a third, given up 22 hits, 7 runs, all earned. Walked 7, struck out 33. Foul ball. We mentioned before this the, the delay that St. Leo rallied to beat Rollins 8-5. to five. So Tampa at the moment has a one-game lead in the loss column. They have three more wins 
than Rollins. But now that's five losses for Rollins, just four for Tampa. Tampa sweeps today. They will clinch the conference title. Yeah, it's great when you can control your destiny. We won't put a cart before the horse. That one hits the base. Do they have a play? No. Oh, wow. Hit the base on a line shot. And by the time anybody could get to the ball, a base hit for La Montaigne. Yeah, that was a pretty wacky play. We saw Earhart ready to make the play, but it pops straight up after hitting the bag. And the good news is Saladino is right there to get on top of it. Yeah. However, there was no shot that uh, Sullivan was going to get to first in time. So that is an unlucky hit for Tampa to give up. But that's a, maybe a break in the right direction for Lynn. First pitch from Canny. Strike call to Ford. And I think when it comes to Sullivan, his 33 walk, strikeout to walk, 7 walk ratio yeah. is really, really, really good. Really good, yeah. That's probably the secret to Sullivan. That's success. almost 5 to 1. Gets two more strikeouts, and it will be 5 to 1. Yeah. I think the, the Spartans did catch a break. It hit the bag and popped straight up. It didn't angle out of play or down the line. It went right where people could at least field it in front of them. Off speed, swing and a miss. Three pitches, and he gets a strikeout. His 34th of the year. Tell you, that rain came through was steady and hard, but it was just a shower that was over Tampa. Yeah. It was nowhere else. Yeah, and that's also a reason we're already in the top of the third for Rollins' game. And, well, let's just say they're not the Ooh. most happy about that loss <laughs> to St. Leo. They're currently leading 7 nothing. Okay. <laughs> But I also agree, we got lucky that it was rain and not lightning or thunder. Yeah. Then we'd be waiting even longer for the all clear. Maybe we'd have to hop back on air and do a semi-podcast at that stage. A <laughs> little bit inside. Dockerty at the plate, the DH. <coughs> a little bit of a shift for him, for the lefty. Strike call, kind of leaving Anthony Nunez exposed as the only player to handle anything on the right side of the field. Last time, Doherty hit one that Urso had to range back to his original shortstop position. Wasn't able to get the throw in time, swing and a miss. Also notice in the outfield, if we take a look, oh, look at, at that in center field, he yeah. is pretty far to the right. Very and much. now with two strikes, we've seen Urso pull this trick out a few times. Yeah, everybody that left moves. side is entirely <laughs> wide open. Jordan Lala is giving him the whole baseline inside. And again, we pointed this out the other day. This is legal in college baseball to have three fielders on one side of the second base bag. Not legal in the majors anymore. Runner goes, hit high in the air, Combo, it's not going to leave the park, Combo waits, makes the catch and hustling back to, sec to first base was La Montagna. Talk to Joe Urso. Oh, oh. and he's out. What, wait a minute. Wait, what's the call? Did he drop? Oh, what? Did he slide over the base and they tagged him? Maybe, no, what he did was they threw it in the first... I know, honestly, I can't tell, but when they brought it in, they were pointing at second base. And that he, oh, did he touch second. the base? That may be it. Huh. I've, I'm going to ask them. What, I might go down and ask them what yeah. happened really quickly Feel as we free. exit the inning. Yeah, I'll get you a word on that, but that's a really <laughs> good play from the outfield. Yeah. I mean, we've seen the Spartans do these types of things all the time. Maybe that's another Kiermaier. Now, what could potentially happen, I know if you touch second base... And then you have to go back to first. You have to touch second base to go back to first. You can't if you touch second base and then just kind of cut across and avoid it. Yeah, that makes sense. You're you're out. All right, I'll double check with them. But All that right. sounds probably like the, okay. the thing. Yeah, feel free and get us a report. Yeah. <laughs> End of the inning anyway. So we'll go to the bottom of the seventh. We'll be right back. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I am an NCA student athlete, and I pledge to be a champion of unity on my team on my campus, and in my community. I pledge to embrace differences and strive for inclusion and collaboration. I pledge to stand against racism, hate, and discrimination. I pledge to strive for love, care, and forgiveness. I pledge to stand against silence, deceit, and obscurity. I pledge to strive for dialogue, truth, 
and understanding. I pledge to stand against fear and doubt. I pledge to strive for trust and belief in one another. I pledge to stand against complacency and stagnancy. I pledge to strive for change and growth. I commit to supporting my fellow student athletes in all circumstances that impact them. I commit to both choosing unity personally and encouraging it for all. I pledge these things because we are stronger together. United, United as, as one. one. Bottom of the seventh, Jamarcus Lyons to lead off for Tampa. Home run is last at bat. That was a while ago now. And the first pitch down the middle for a strike by Shane. Was I right about coming back on second? You're exactly right. And that is uh, what he did. He forgot to tag up at second when he was coming back. If you, yeah, if you touch the bag at second and then have to retreat back to first, you have to touch the bag on your retreat. If you hop over it or cut a little bit inside. Yeah, it looked like he did hop over it. Somebody on Tampa noticed it. And mm -hmm. Good eye. Because mm -hmm. I've never seen that rule be enforced. And actually really I've happened. seen it before, but it's like once, a ye once every decade it seems like it happens. A heads-up play. And it kind of reminds me where, you know, Tampa, they like to try to do those heads-up plays. Maybe mm -hmm. that's something that Kiermaier mentioned just as well yeah. because he's been teaching the team. He was the architect of the famous the Lava catch, catch against yeah. Nova Southeastern last year. Ground ball, Rodriguez. Deep in the hole in time. Nice throw. So one down. And coming to the plate will be Garavito. A one for three day for Garavito, a double he scored last time up. Part of the five run sixth inning. I talked to Joe Urso just before we started again. I said, How do have you ever been able to test this field for rain like this because it's been a very dry spring and he said the field's fine it, it drains water fast he said the thing that you have to watch is you will really slide and you better make sure you don't overslide. and I did notice even though it ended up not having anything to do with the play when Montagna came back he slid and actually slid past first base so I thought maybe they had tagged him out on sliding past the bag Yeah, I think that's kind of an important sort of thing because we also saw Earhart sliding in a little far into second when the rain was just yeah. beginning. Yeah. So I thought it would be interesting to see those ground balls in the base path, how that affects play. Ground ball, Rodriguez on a hop, gobbles, and throws him out. We'll bring Saladino to the plate now with two outs. For those joining in, this is still the first game. <laughs> Second game was supposed to start at 6. I think even on a normal day it wouldn't have, but hour plus rain delay. I have a feeling that it probably would have been around now that we'd get started, depending yeah. on how long that first game went. And it wasn't the fastest game, but it wasn't the slowest either, so probably be close to schedule. Two balls, no strikes. The pitch, outside, high. Down the middle for a strike. And that one... A little bit low, and Saladino gets a pass to first to bring up Jose Cadenas. That's Saladino's third time reaching base today. He did it with a double, a hit by pitch, and now a walk. All he needs is a catcher's interference uh, and a fielder's choice to get on a, well, and an error to get on every possible way. In the most unique way, way. <laughs> yes. 
I wonder if you could get a super cycle with like 10 at bats in a game. That would be uh, something you'd need like back in the tournament uh, last season when Tampa had a that pretty big uh, lot to a little victory in round yeah. one against Spring Hill. Yeah. If one of the Tampa players stayed in the lineup, they would have had like nine or ten at bats, a chance to try to get every single on base. Uh, I wonder if anybody's ever had stat. double digit at bats in a game. I would think so. Game that goes 18, 19 innings. I do know one story. Uh, in Japan, for one of the high school like tournaments, I believe, one of the games went 50 innings and was played over four days. Wow. Both pitchers pitched a complete game <laughs> Come with on. over 600 pitches. Oh, jeez. One of them had an ultimate shutout. <laughs> Rodriguez shovels it over to Orico to end the inning. Complain continue. <laughs> and, the, and basically, they both, and the other had conceded three runs in the 50th inning. That's a game where you'd probably see 10 at-bats Easily, for yeah, each maybe player. 20. Anyway, <laughs> Spartans don't score here in the 7th. We head to the 8th, and it's 6-2. Tampa leads Lynn. Champions know how to seize opportunities. When they see moments of greatness unfold right before their eyes, they push as hard as they possibly can, and then they push harder. Because the heart of a champion never settles, never quits, and never stops giving its all. We are champions. We are Division II. We go big, we give it everything we've got, and we win. On the field, on our campuses, in our communities, for our causes, in our careers. We rise to become champions in everything we do. We are Division II, and there are no limits here. We make our time count. We set our own path. We become champions on our terms. It's time to up your game, because we're here to play and learn. But most importantly, we're here to discover ourselves, our vision, our heart, our drive, to achieve every goal we aim for, because we want to be champions at the highest level, life. At Division II, the opportunities are here. Are you ready? Top of the eighth we go. John Rodriguez to lead off for Lynn. Spartans up 6-2. to two. Paul Sullivan on the mound for Tampa. Pitched a nice seventh inning. Fires that one a little bit low. I noticed Sullivan had nine pitches in that inning. Yeah, he was Call efficient. It immaculate inning, not immaculate, <laughs> because he only had one strikeout. Okay. But we think that you could have like a diamond or emerald if you had three pitches and got out of the inning. I think that'd be more impressive, rather than nine strikes. Yeah. Although I wonder how many times it's actually happened because it's three not pitches. A, yeah, it's not a it's not they really keep track of, but. It surely is more than the Immaculate. I would think so. would happen more often than an Immaculate. I just read this week somebody in the majors threw the first Immaculate inning of the year. I think it was uh, Colin Holderman on the Pirates, right? Yes. Immaculate inning is nine strikes. Oh, that is hit hard and deep down the line. Lala just watches it hit the fence, and it is a 6-3 to three game on the home run by Rodriguez. Jack, you mentioned earlier that you were disappointed that I got the only Spartans home run call. Well, you've had two Lynn home run calls. Yes. <laughs> actually, no, that's false. I actually had the first home run call for Lynn back in the fourth inning. Yes. I was actually wrong in that regard. But there's your first home run call. <laughs> <laughs> that was a no-doubter as well. So two of the three runs for Lynn, courtesy of the long ball, solo shots. And they actually were both a leadoff, the inning home runs. So we'll see how Sullivan bounces back. He actually gave up a hit to start his relief appearance and settled down with three outs. Took something off that, swing and a miss. And the pitch. Off-speed pitch again. Comes back with a strikeout. Got to like that from Paul Sullivan. 
I've noticed that when he conceded those leadoff hits in both the innings, he responded with a three-pitch strikeout. Not going to waste any time. I know Ursa will love that bounce-back ability just yeah. to show a pitcher who can immediately focus on the next hit. Yes. A little bit low. Orico, the leadoff hitter. Officially one for one today, but gotten on three times. He's walked twice and is halfway to a third walk. Strike call. Swing and a miss. Two and two. So Sullivan digging in here after going behind 2-0. But he bloops one and bounces right in front of Combo. So a base hit. And it will bring... Judge to the plate. Arico's been on four times today in four at bats. Officially two for two. Garavito with a quick trip out to the mound. And now Joe Urso is going to make a trip. I think the question will be if there is someone warming up. I see a head out there, but they, they've hidden the bullpens out of our view and can't really tell if someone's warming up or not. They may get annoyed that we're trying to spoil who's coming in for the Spartans. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they're trying to hide them from us. Maybe from the other team. <laughs> from the other too. team. And that's a notable design choice because keep yeah. in mind, the away bullpen, which is out of view on our camera, is, is full visible view. for us. Yeah. Full view to the whole stadium. And I think they're signaling to the bullpen. Yeah, they're going to make a change. Now, the, the fact that Garavito came out, I don't know if he saw something with Sullivan that he didn't like. I mean, in terms of maybe an injury or something like that. I think that's Braden Nelson coming in. Yep. Makes sense. He only had one out yesterday, so he's good to go. And yeah. with his longevity, he can get a four out save. Sorry, yeah. five out save. Yeah. So he is the fireman for the Spartans. So he will inherit a base runner and one out in the inning. Why don't we take a break while he warms up and we'll come back and get back to the ball game. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I am an NCAA student athlete. And I pledge to be a champion of unity on my team, on my campus, and in my community. I pledge to embrace differences and strive for inclusion and collaboration. I pledge to stand against racism, hate, and discrimination. I pledge to strive for love, care, and forgiveness. I pledge to stand against silence, deceit, and obscurity. I pledge to strive for dialogue, truth, and understanding. I pledge to stand against fear and doubt. I pledge to strive for trust and belief in one another. I pledge to stand against complacency and stagnancy. I pledge to strive for change and growth. I commit to supporting my fellow student athletes in all circumstances that impact them. I commit to both choosing unity personally and encouraging it for all. I pledge these things because we are stronger together. United, United as, as one. Braden Nelson will finish up his warm-ups and come on to pitch for the Spartans. And get my updated stats on him. This is his 19th appearance of the year. No starts, all in relief, though he has a 5-0 record, two saves. 37 two-thirds innings pitched, 38 hits, 18 runs, 15 earned, 13 walks, 45 strikeouts. And the first batter he faces will be David Judge. 
But first, a throw to first at Drew Earhart snags. Before today, he was leading the team in strikeouts, despite having fewer innings than the starters. But Canny's five strikeout day has currently put him one strikeout <laughs> ahead at 46. We'll see if he battles back to tie it up and take the lead again. One out, a 6-3 ball game now. Hit him. He hit him on the wrist or forearm anyway. Judge doesn't look too thrilled by it. I don't blame him. No. I think it hit him right above the wrist. I think maybe in the forearm, I guess, is what it is. It doesn't really matter where you get hit. It's going to (laughs) hurt quite a bit, especially the fast heater that Nelson is able to throw. Yeah. The one thing you don't like is no matter how the runner gets on, is putting a runner on base because now the tying runner is at the plate. Paulino. So Orico on second and Judge on first. Paulino to the plate. Way outside. Paulino's got nine home runs on the year, so he could do it. Hit the long ball. In the dirt, behind 2-0. I think Nelson will want a new ball quickly here, but, yeah, just something up with him right now. I think he just needs maybe another pitch or two just to get Mm -hmm. fully settled in because it hasn't been perfect so far. Way outside. So two way outside. That one... The one before that was low and inside, so he's 3-0 and o on his second batter. There he pounded the strike zone, 3-1. and one. Three, one. And he walked him. Bases are now loaded. At least there is one out, so that will help Nelson a little. A grounder to short can't help turn two. Naturally, you've got a force out at home. That's probably the target. This is Byron Murray and Sam Militello coming out for a quick trip to the mound. Any stretch. Oh, yeah. It was just, come on, do it. Step up. Murray does have a home run on the day. It was a solo shot back in the fourth. And he hit that one, crushed it. Now against Braden Nelson. Ooh, and he hit him. He hit him. Forces in a run. And it's now six to four, and the bases are still loaded. So Braden is struggling on the mound today. That really is a rarity for Nelson to really have these command issues. La Montagna to the plate. Now a 6-4 baseball game. And here comes Joe, and I think Joe Urso said, nope, we can't get in any deeper than this. 
So Braden Nelson came in and hit a batter, walked a batter, hit a batter. And Joe is going to make the change. And we'll see who comes in. Is that Dalton? Looks like it. Looks like his stride. And the hair. It will be Dalton Ross. We'll let him warm up, and we'll come back and see what he can do right here on TampaSpartans.tv. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I am an NCAA student athlete. And I pledge to be a champion of unity on my team, on my campus, and in my community. I pledge to embrace differences and strive for inclusion and collaboration. I pledge to stand against racism, hate, and discrimination. I pledge to strive for love, care, and forgiveness. I pledge to stand against silence, deceit, and obscurity. I pledge to strive for dialogue, truth, and understanding. I pledge to stand against fear and doubt. I pledge to strive for trust and belief in one another. I pledge to stand against complacency and stagnancy. I pledge to strive for change and growth. I commit to supporting my fellow student athletes in all circumstances that impact them. I commit to both choosing unity personally and encouraging it for all. I pledge these things because we are stronger together. United, United as, as one. one. So Dalton Ross into pitch for Tampa. The righty is appearance number 20 on the season. All in relief. 2-2 two and two record with three saves. 29 innings pitched. 25 hits, 12 runs. Eight of them earned. Walked 10. Struck out 24. My printer cut off the ERA. I can find that quickly. All right. He currently is at 248. Bases loaded. Now a 6-4 game. First pitch, strike to La Montagna. Things have gotten interesting here in the eighth inning. That's why it's never over till it's over. Thank you, Yogi. <laughs> <laughs> Ground ball, they could turn two. There's one. Urso's relay out of the inning, and it is a 6-4 lead. For Tampa, so Dalton Ross comes in and shuts down the Fighting Saints. So we've played seven and a half, Tampa six, Lynn four, right here on TampaSpartans.tv. Fighting Knights 
I think I said Saints a couple times. No excuse for it, but uh, there was a high school team many years ago in our conference named the Fighting Saints. Fighting Saints is a really cool nickname. I, I can't lie, though. <laughs> I think it's but actually a little better than Fighting Saints. Totally my apologies on that one. You know, when people go, my bad, they're like, it wasn't anybody else's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're not going to blame the high school team for getting the name wrong. <laughs> I always like that when athletes go, hey, it was my bad. It's like, yeah, I know, you threw the ball out of bounds. <laughs> Jordan Lala at the plate, by the way. And he rips one for a base hit. Couple runs for the Fighting Knights in the top of the eighth. Tighten this game up. It's 6-4 now, but Lala with a leadoff single for Tampa. <coughs> We've been talking about Lala's great average all season, and, well, he's three for five tonight, and that'll be one of the ways he can increase it. Yeah. Like Combo, he's also chasing 400 or even 430. Jeez. <laughs> Video game numbers. Drew Earhart at the plate now. A base hit. A fly out, a walk, and a double brought in a, an RBI. Earhart needed three hits coming into today's game to become the all-time hits leader in Tampa history. He has two today. Shows bunt, pulls it back. Bottom of the eighth, 6-4. Tampa holding a slim two-run lead over the Fighting Knights. And the pitch there goes Lala. From the knees, he's going to make it in. And as Joe Urso said, hold on to that base when you go sliding by after this rain. The good thing is now Earhart doesn't have to sacrifice him to f second. Now he's in scoring position with a 1-1 count. Lala heading for third. They weren't playing for him, but I think they got him here, and he slid past the base anyway. I think he thought he had the jump. Now here's the thing. I was looking at the umpire. Mm -hmm. He was safe on the initial tag. But yeah. he, slid he slid past, past the it. bat. Yep, as we were told might happen after the uh, the rain. I'm not sure. Jordan just, I think he th saw the third baseman not covering the base very well and thought he might have had a chance. Fly ball. Ranging over is Murray. <laughs> and out of nowhere, Paulino makes the catch. Murray's looking at him like, what? Yeah, he lost his hat. He made that run all the way from center. I don't know if Murray liked that. Very least, that little miscommunication yeah. uh, did lead to a catch, unlike mm -hmm. the one from left field that did right. drop for uh, a couple of runs scoring. J.D. Urso checks his swing, but they call it a strike. Shane with the pitch. Bounces away to the backstop. One and one. Shane to Urso. Bounces another one to the backstop. They kind of have a Dalton Ross look-alike for Lynn retrieving the Baseball's like Dalton does for Tampa when he's not pitching. He's number 35, and he's got similar hair. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's a strike. Two and two with two outs now. Ground ball gets through for a base hit for Urso. Just his second hit of the day, but he's reached base four times. One on a fielder's choice, though. Right 
E.J. Combo to the plate now for Tampa. Urso close to the base at first. Pitches way outside. Combo two for four. Base hit in the first inning. Flew out, struck out, and a double with an RBI back in the sixth. Fouls that one. Is it? They might have a play on it. And it falls in the foul territory, but... Neither the left fielder nor the third baseman were able to get there in time. So just a strike. One-one pitch. They go to first. Now, normally between double headers, and we're already about an hour behind on this one, it, they wait about 30, 45 minutes. We still have senior day things to go through, and there are 18 seniors. There goes the runner. Ball is hit up in the air. There's two outs anyway, so Urso just keeps running, running, and making the catch is La Montaña for the third out of the inning. So we'll worry about senior day festivities later. We go to the top of the ninth. One last chance for Lynn. They cut it down in the eighth. See what happens here in the ninth. 6-4, Tampa on top on TampaSpartans.tv. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. Ford will lead off the top of the ninth for the Fighting Knights. Dalton Ross on the mound, who came in, faced one batter, got him to bounce into a double play to shut down a Lynn rally in the eighth. Ground ball. Ross fields it, hustles it over to Earhart. One down here in the ninth. Rollins, as we mentioned, lost earlier today to St. Leo in the first game of a double header to give the Spartans a... One game lead in the loss column. Rollins in the second game is up 7-3. Halfway through the doubleheader. Doherty at the plate now. Ground ball. Ranging as Saladino. Gobbles it. Two down here in the ninth. Yep. John Rodriguez to the plate. Two outs in the ninth. 6-4, Tampa on top. Rodriguez checks his swing. And I'll mention there is a player warming up on deck. If they do survive, 
that would see the return of Yuzuki Okamura. Okay, who was the catcher in yesterday's first game. Ross leans in. The sidearm pitcher throws. Ground ball foul. This has really been Ross's longest at bat because he got through in one and a third with just three pitches <laughs> off the double play ball and then two quick ground outs to start the inning. Two balls, one strike. Ross to Rodriguez. Boops went out toward Cumbo. It's going to fall in for a base hit, so Lynn stays alive and has the tying run coming to the plate. And it is, in fact, a pinch hitter. Yep, I saw him taking some warm-up swings. Okamura replacing Avino. If this game were to go to the bottom of the ninth, I assume he'd stay behind the plate, yes. forming a new battery. Yuzuki Akamura started yesterday behind the plate. He is a junior from Shiga, Japan. Ross out of the stretch. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Ross doesn't waste time. He's got his sign. He's ready. He fires. A little bit low. One one pitch. Outside. Good stop by Garavito. Dalton gets that pitch back, snaps the wrist. Wasn't happy with what he threw. Two balls, one strike. Ground ball foul down the third baseline. Two and two. See, they're not doing the two strikes, two out sound tonight. No. After they yeah. had a, yeah. a couple of hiccups with it in the previous game, yeah. uh, Lynn was in that spot, but they were able to then keep the inning going. Ball three. Don't want to put the tying run on base. Three balls, one strike. Two, full count. They Three finally updated it. Okay, all right. I trusted him. Foul ball. Good thing for Lynn is Rodriguez can get a running start with a 3-2 count. And with two outs, nothing to lose. Yep. Three, two again. Runner goes. Inside, he walked him. So the tying run is on first. Striding to the plate is Orico, who has a two-for-two two day going. Okamura taking his bat down with him. <laughs> Not sure why. <laughs> I think they're going to have a pinch runner come in for him. They're just waiting for... Confirmation. There it is. Yeah, okay. DJ Flowers is going to be on first now. So I was actually wrong. They're not going to have Okamura staying in the game. So they're they're going to use that extra speed since he does represent, like you mentioned, the tying run. Tying run. Orico to the plate. Walk. Base hit. Walk and a base hit. First pitch. Strike one. Runners at first and second. Two outs. Top of the ninth. Tampa up 6-4. The pitch. Ground ball. Fielded by Ross at the pitcher's mound. Throws it to Earhart. Spartans win. 6-4. Win number 25 in conference play. Win number 36 on the season. Spartans win it with six runs, 13 hits, no errors. And Lynn, four runs, eight hits, no errors. 
Tampa now 25 and 4 on the season, 36 and 9 on the season. With Rollins losing the first game to St. Leo, they are 21 and 5. One game, the Spartans have a one game edge in the win and the loss column, and three games up in the win column now. Four games now up in the win column, and Rollins is at 33 and 13. But as we mentioned, they're leading in their second game of the doubleheader. We're going to have Senior Day festivities coming up quickly, so hang with us. We'll have a a little bit of a commercial interruption, but then Senior Day festivities and then Game 2 of the doubleheader. Tampa wins it. Alex Canny gets the win to go to 7-0 and on the air. Dalton Ross, nice job in relief, picking up a save here tonight. So Tampa wins it 6-4. We'll be back for Senior Day right after this. You've been watching on Tampa Spartans.tv. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I am an NCAA student athlete. And I pledge to be a champion of unity on my team on my campus and in my community. I pledge to embrace differences and strive for inclusion and collaboration. I pledge to stand against racism, hate, and discrimination. I pledge to strive for love